Hidden in the deep depths of the Underhive, away from the prying eyes of the Palinodian forces, the gangs are busy at work growing twisted and horrific monsters in their gene vats to aid them in their fight for power and control in the Underhive. Welcome to Navy Paints. In this video, I'll be showing you how I made and painted these gene vats. This will make a great centerpiece for any sci-fi tabletop war game. Let's crack in. To make the three vats, I've just used some salt and pepper shakers I picked up at the dollar store, screwed the lids off and glued those on the underside, and with some sheets of plastic card, just cut myself a piece, wrapped it around the top. I used two glues to hold these into place. This was PVA glue and super glue. And instead of manually holding them there for hours, I've just used some rubber bands and wrapped those around until it was nice and tight and left those to dry overnight. For the main body of the pump, I've used this plastic robot from the dollar store. This robot came in multiple pieces so I could reposition some of those until the model looked aesthetically pleasing. And using some plastic card, I've built myself a little box and mounted this piece on top. On these two angles, I've just used a couple of pieces of plastic card, glued those into position. This will give me some more room later to glue some extra bits and pieces on. Due to the weird shape of the robot body, it wasn't sitting flush to the top of the box. So to fix this problem, I've just used these U-shaped plastic card bars, cut myself a couple of pieces to length and glued them into place using super glue. For the two little pumps that come off the main body and connect to the actual vat, I've used another couple of pieces from this robot kit. I believe this is the knee pads and the missiles from your shoulders. For the top half of the pump, I've used a round piece of plastic card and glued that into the knee section. For the lower half, I've used the little missile launcher, facing the missiles inwards, and glued that onto the main body. Then the two halves just slot together with the holes provided. To get a rough idea what the final size of the model will be, I've dry fitted all the parts together. So here I've put two sheets of textured plastic card together. These will form the base. On top of that, I've placed the three vats and the main body of the pump. For the touchscreen interface, I've just used an old CD player display screen. Once I was happy with the final positions of each piece, I just marked it out with a texter. With that marked out, now I've glued the base to a thin sheet of foam board. This will give the model a bit more height. For the trimming on the floor, I've gone with L-shaped plastic card rod. Measured, cut and glued those into position, forming a border. And for the three vats here, you can see I've only cut through the plastic flooring, but I actually cut through the entire thing later on. And for the bottom half of the base's border, I've gone back to this U-shaped plastic card rod. Measured myself a piece to fit on each edge and glue those into position. With that, the edging of the base is done. To mount the screen onto the model, I got lucky and got this little kids excavator railing. The screen fit in there perfectly, so I just glued that into position and mounted it onto the model using some square plastic card rod. For the two side panels next to the front of the screen, I just used the arms from that robot kit again with the whole side facing inwards I glued these into position. This will allow me to run some piping from that hole into the main body later. With some plastic card and some plastic card rod, I've extended and filled the area between the two missile pods, hiding the missiles and giving the front end a nice square finish. Now back onto the vats. With the glue fully dried, I've taken a hobby knife and carefully cut away at all the rubber bands and glued each vat into the hole on the floor with PVA and super glue. For all the pipes on the model, I've gone with this textured tubing. This is actually made to hold your flywire screen in. It's very rubbery and flexible, so it's perfect for making bending pipes. Before gluing anything into place, I always measure and dry fit first, make sure I've got the right length. And then I go ahead with super glue and glue all these into position. I've got these old school Chaos Raptor backpacks. They come with a lot of detail like skulls, pipes and trimming, plus the bottom vent of the jump pack. Gluing them on the side here, these will make perfect little exhausts or whatever they could be, giving the model a lot more detail on the sides. To connect the jump packs to the floor, I've put these random just scrap I've had laying around in my bits box and connected the backpack to the floor using a bit of that tubing. For all the thinner wires around the model, I've gone with some wire out of old CD players. 
This one has a connector in one end and perfectly fits into the top of the screen. So I've just put some super glue on this, glued that into place. And then to glue the wires into the machinery, I've just used the drill, drilled a few holes and plugged each hole with the wire. Around the bottom of each vat, I've run a bit of that rubber tubing from one side around to the other, connecting it to the box in the front. Also across the middle of the entire model, I've joined the two pieces together with a piece of plastic card. On the side of the main bit of the machinery here, I've just glued a couple of air vents. Around random parts of the model, I'll put some valves down as the build goes on. They're really easy to install, so all I do is just drill a hole first where it's gonna go, find a piece of plastic card that will fit in the hole of the valve and in the hole of the model. Plug that in. With the valve, just push this over the top. This is a nice snug fit. Apply some super glue and any excess just cut off. For the lids of the vats, I just used some off-cut plastic card. Set that on top of the vat and with the texture, just marked around and cut those out. Don't glue these into place yet. They get glued down after the resin has been poured. Off camera, I've glued a lot of little bits and pieces onto the model. So I'll just go through now roughly what they all are. On the right here is a set player lens. I've just glued that into position glued a vent on the left hand side and on the front I've glued a valve. On top of the screen I've just put this extra bit just to bulk the screen out a little bit. On either side of the screen I've just glued a little extension from each pump and drilled those into the floor. On the top I've glued this canister like piece and then ran a couple of pipes into the machine from it. And on the far left I've just put down some random bits and bobs, nothing really special over there, just to fill up that area a little bit. On the right hand side here at the front, again I felt it was a bit plain of an area. So I just took a chunk out of the base with a hobby knife and filled it in with a bunch of plastic card representing pipes running underground. And to finish this area off, I just put a valve on top of the pipes and the section I cut out, I just boarded it with a little bit of plastic card. Around the top of the vats, I just stuck some random bits and bobs just to make it look like they might be working. And on each vat lid, I put a little hatch so people can get in and out of there, and also a valve. The final part of the build was to stick some random wires around the model just to get a bit more character and detail. The last thing I did before painting was take my hobby knife and drill, and just go around the model drilling holes, cutting out chunks, and just generally damaging up the model. With the battle damage completed, the model's ready for painting. Before undercutting the model, I needed to seal up the vats. So with just a bit of uh, electrical tape here, I've just gone around each vat, sealing those up nicely. This will keep the paint off them and keep them nice and clean. If you do get a little bit of paint on the vats, it's no big deal. You can just take your hobby knife and scratch it off later. If you do this properly, it will save you a lot of time though. I airbrushed my undercoat on and I used Vallejo's Black Primer mixed with a little bit of Flow Improver. I gave the entire model a few coats of this colour until I had good coverage. When I got to the top rim of each vat, I just held the lid on just to make sure no paint gets inside. The only part of the model I didn't undercoat with my airbrush was inside the top of the vat. I didn't bother doing those until right at the end of the model, where I could just do all the steps by hand. The glass on the screen I didn't tape up, as I undercoated this normally, and I'll just paint it as usual. The next base coat to go over the entire model was True Copper from the Ami Painter. Again, this is run through the airbrush with a little flow improver mixed in. While applying this paint, I wasn't too worried about getting 100% coverage, as this just forms the base for the chipping to be done later. Once the true copper was completely dry, I've gone over to the chipping medium from Vallejo. I've run this one through my brush yet again, but this time with no flow improver mixed in, and giving the entire model a coat with this paint. When applying the chipping medium, the amount you apply will vary the amount you remove later. So if you go very heavy with the chipping medium, you'll get lots of cracks, and you'll be able to take big chunks of the paint off. If you go a lot lighter, you'll get little tiny flakes to come off and a lot less cracking. I like to mix up the two styles, so some areas will go heavy, some areas light, and vary up the finish of the model this way. Once the chipping medium had fully dried, now it's time to lay down my base coats. Normally I'd do this all in one go, so base coat the entire model, and then chip it at the same time. Because this model is so heavy on one side due to the three vats being at one end, and also I've got no handle or anywhere to grab the model, I avoid touching the model with my hands as much as possible as not to remove any chipping medium from the model. The three colours I've gone with here are Drake Tooth from the Ami Painter. This is applied through my airbrush with some flow improver mixed in and this is applied to the vats only. For the other areas of the machine, I've gone with Vallejo's Model Air White. 
This is run straight through the airbrush with no flow improver mixed into it. And just giving these areas a nice even coat. Once that was done, I've gone to the plate male metal from the Army Painter, again through the airbrush. This was applied to all the floor and metal areas of the model. If I did get a little bit of this onto the drag tooth or vice versa, I wasn't too worried about it. And the fourth color here is light turquoise from Vallejo and this was applied with a brush. When applying any of the paints with a brush, I'm trying to keep them as thin as possible, but I wasn't too worried about going a little bit thicker in areas as it'll add some texture and we're going to remove a lot of the paint later anyways. With these three base coats down, now it's time to remove the paint. So I just use my stippling brush, apply some water to the tip of it, and just dab this into the area where I want to remove the paint. And I just go around the entire model, removing, dabbing, and stripping the paint off until I was happy with the end result. Due to the rest of the model having chipping medium on it still, I got a big paintbrush, and just with pure water, just went over the entire model, the water will activate the chipping medium, and with the chipping medium activated this way, it'll dry out and allow me to handle the model later. With the chipping medium set, now I can handle the model without any worry. So for all the metallic areas, I've gone with plate male metal from the Army Painter. The red areas, I've gone with Mephisto on red from Citadel. The black areas have gone with Abaddon Black, also from Citadel. And the last one is Squig Orange. You guess that this is for the orange areas, and this is from Citadel also. These four paints were all applied with one coat, but in some areas I did require a second. On the edge of the base, I went with a hazard stripe pattern, and to make this a lot easier than doing it by freehand, I cut myself a little stencil, which is just simply a piece of plastic card. Using this stencil and a black texture, I went around the entire rim of the base, marking out where I'm going to put each hazard stripe. The two colours for the hazard stripes I've gone with are both from Citadel, they're Avalon Sunset and Abaddon Black. With both these colours, I mixed in a little bit of water into the paint, so it's about a 90 to 10 mix of paint to water. For the Avalon Sunset, I've gone around the entire base first and put down a base coat. Then I've swapped over to the Abaddon Black and just alternated between the two colours until I had good coverage on all the areas and making sure the hazard stripes are pretty straight. They don't have to be perfect, but they have to be pretty close. With the second half of the base coats down, now it's time to chip them up as well. So to do this, this time I've gone to a sponge. This is just done with a basic kitchen sponge. I've just torn a little corner off, dabbed off most of the paint. And with the little remaining paint on the sponge, I've just dabbed this around the entire model, applying all the chips this way. For the wires, I've gone with six colors. I've applied all six colors just quickly with one coat. The six colors are green skin and ash gray, both from Nami Painter, blue violet and light turquoise. These are from Vallejo. And the last two colors are from Citadel, they're Avalon Sunset and Abaddon Black. The reason why I painted the wires in after I done all the chipping is to not chip up the wires as they're not metallic. With all that done, now the real fun weathering begins. So this first color here is Rust Texture from Vallejo. I've applied this firstly with a brush. Once that's dry, I come in with a Q-tip. This is great for picking out edges, leaving streaks, and dabbing on the paint. Using this and the paintbrush, I get really varied and nice results. With that dry, now it's time to give the model a wash. This is Old Earth from Vallejo. I mix this with water, it's about a 60-40 mix. And I just go the entire model except the glass areas. Once that wash is dry, the next two colours are Nylac Oxide and Slimy Grime Light. With these two colours, like the rust texture earlier, I apply these with a paintbrush and a Q-tip and vary the amounts of water I mix into each paint. Especially with the Nylac Oxide, just be very sparing with this colour as it can dominate the model if you go too heavy. For the screen here, I've gone with four colors, all from the Ami Painter. These are all different shades of green. So we've got green skin, goblin green, snake scales, and jungle green. So this base coat here is the green skin. With the green skin, I've mixed a little bit of water into the paint just to help it flow and be a little bit smoother. 
This took me about five to six coats of this color, letting it dry fully before applying the next coat. With the green skin fully dry, now I've started to mix the colors together. With each of these colors, I don't know the exact amounts that I mixed. I was sort of winging it as I went along. So the first mix was green skin with goblin green. Then I blended my way from the goblin green through to goblin green snake scales. Once I got to the snake scales, I blended it with the jungle green. With each of these blends, I just painted the border of the screen. As I started blending the colors and lightening it up, I painted the border thinner and with less of the paint. Due to the model being so big and bulky, I couldn't hold it and paint the image onto the screen here at the same time. So I've painted this off camera. The color I went with was Spaceship Exterior from the Army Painter. When painting on the freehand, just take your time. Here you can see I've made a few mistakes. It's an easy fix. I've just gone back to the Goblin Green and touched up any lines that might be awkward, crooked or too fat. Instead of being left with a nice science fiction looking screen, I've got myself a chalkboard. So to fix this, I've gone over to Tesseract Glow. I've mixed this with a tiny bit of water, and I've just gone over the screen a few times with the Tesseract Glow. I applied about three to four coats of the Tesseract Glow until I was happy with the color. Around the metal frame, I also put a couple of coats of the Tesseract Glow. This was just giving me a basic light source effect. And to finish off the screen, I've gone over to the Army Painter's Gloss Varnish, and I've put on four coats of this color, and with that, the screen's now completed. With the model fully painted, now it's time to add the creatures to the vats. All three of these are resin printed, and I've painted these off camera. So I've got myself a little face hugger here. Some sort of psychic baby looking thing. And a brain with teeth. Before putting each model into the vats, I've connected a wire or two to each one of them. These will represent some sort of feeding or breathing tubes. And at the top of each vat on the inside, I've just drilled a couple of holes where I can fit the wires into. Then with each model, I just dry fitted those inside the containers and cut the wires to length. And using both Super and PVA glue, I glued each monster into position. Now for the dreaded resin pour. I've gone with Ink Labs resin here. This is a two part epoxy resin. You just mix both parts equally. I've roughly estimated how much resin I needed. Mix the two resins together and added into the resin a few drops of fluorescent yellow from Vallejo. When mixing the resin, always mix slowly as to not cause too many air bubbles to appear. Once I was happy with the mix after a couple of minutes, I then just simply poured the resin into the tubes and hoped for the best. Once I'd poured the resin, I just watched it for about 30 minutes and just with a little toothpick, I just fished out any bubbles that might have stuck to the models. With the lids off, it was pretty much smooth sailing. With the resin pour done, I did not glue on the lids to the models. I've done that in the past and here's a link to a video where you can see what happens. I've just let the model sit for 24 hours till the resin hardened. With the resin fully cured, I've now glued the lids on each model. The last couple of steps to do to the model was paint the lights on the front and add some mold and grime to the sides of the tanks using slummy grime light and oiled earth, both from Vallejo. Once those steps are completed, this epic build is done.
And here it is with the three horrors fully matured and ready to be unleashed into the underhive. Thanks for watching Navy Paints. If you liked the video, please click the sub button and leave me a like. If there's anything you want to see in a future video, please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya!